Hello and welcome to our Halloween themed webinar, Five Downright Frightening Labor Management Scenarios. We're glad to have you with us for the next half hour. For those of you on Twitter, our marketing team is going to be live tweeting throughout the webinar. So please feel free to follow along and share your thoughts using at net time and hashtag labor management. My name is Jennifer Spencer and I'm the Director of Marketing here at NetTime Solutions. And if you'd like, you can follow and chat with me on Twitter. I'm at Jen Spencer. And also please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. So in today's webinar, we're going to take a look at five of the most frightening labor management scenarios that we see in the time and attendance industry. And then I'll explain how a cloud-based automated time and attendance solution can help. So throughout the webinar, we're going to cover the following topics disparate systems, uncontrolled overtime, wage theft, multiple pay policies, and paper timesheets. We'll close our webinar with a Q&A session, so as questions arise, please feel free to enter them directly into the control panel of GoToWebinar, and I'll do my very best to answer all of your questions at the end. So let's dive into our first frightening scenario, disparate systems. So for our purposes today, when we talk about disparate systems, we're referring to computer software that's designed to operate as fundamentally distinct data processing systems without exchanging data or interacting with other systems. So what does this look like in the labor management world? Well, let's assume you currently use one type of software to track time and attendance, and then another to track payroll. Each employee has an account and tracks hours worked as well as requests for time off before notifying his or her manager, who approves it in this case, and then sends it to you. And at this point, you download it and you upload it to your payroll system. So what kind of challenge might arise? Maybe you happen to notice that one of the employees has made a mistake that his manager didn't catch. So you email the manager with clarifying questions as well as the original document with your amendments. And meanwhile, the employee realizes the mistake, fixes it, and notifies his manager with a new version. There are now three versions of the same document in circulation and several employees spending time on one small error. This is just one example of the issues that disparate systems can cause. And any opportunity for even minor human error can have a large ripple effect throughout an entire company. In the HR software world, we come across a number of companies with platforms that tout their integrations. And unfortunately, many of these integrations take the form of file-based transfers. So here's what a file-based transfer looks like from a time and attendance software into a payroll system. So you download the data from your time and attendance system as an Excel type spreadsheet like a CSV or an XLS file. The spreadsheet then is manually verified, possibly edited and corrected. And then the file is uploaded into a payroll system. So the process is not only time sensitive, but it also allows for human error. And we see some pretty scary things when systems are not integrated properly. And the worst that we've seen are cases where employees can literally drop off because the system can't read something. So how does this happen? Let's say you create a CSV file, but you don't save it the right way. Or you save it as a CSV, but then you want to check the data. So you open it in Excel, which changes the data in the original CSV file. So for example, say your employee ID numbers have leading zeros. When you create a CSV file, the leading zeros are there, but once you open it in Excel, Excel automatically drops those leading zeros. The file that you then import into your system now contains errors, and you might not even know it. So what we recommend as a solution is a web service integration. With a web service integration, your company can integrate software platforms seamlessly. Your systems can share data, either unilaterally or bilaterally, all depending on the needs of your business. And web services integrations can either be real time or scheduled every night or every hour. It's totally up to you. Unlike a file-based integration, the communication stream between software platforms isn't start and stop, but rather the data flows naturally between the two platforms to achieve optimal integration. One of the reasons our web services in particular are so flexible is that they're both platform and language independent, and they allow organizations to communicate data without intimate knowledge of each other's IT systems behind the firewall. 
There are actually some web services that do not support all markup languages, so you'll want to review any documentation that your software provider has to offer when it comes to offering seamless integration. Our second frightening labor management scenario is uncontrolled overtime. And this scenario is particularly scary because it's directly tied to a company's bottom line. So when it comes to overtime, there are an abundance of drawbacks, from extra wages paid and an overworked employee to the possibility of low quality work produced, overtime is detrimental to everyone involved. And preventing overtime can be difficult without having the right data at the right time. So we're going to look um, at how we can be better prepared. But first, let's meet um, a wonderful employee, Mary. She's a very motivated manager, and she's sitting down to create her employees' schedules for the next two weeks. And she completes one employee's schedule, and she begins the next. Um, let's call her Caitlin. And Caitlin's requested Wednesday through Sunday off. And she's looking at how she's going to fill um, Caitlin's shift. And she sees that Brad is on her list, and he's such an outstanding employee, and he's got an open schedule. So Mary assigns him the shifts she would have given to Caitlin. And what Mary doesn't realize is that even though Brad's schedule looks very open, by assigning him those additional shifts, his, he's going to go above his 40 hours and enter into overtime. So how can we help Mary avoid unnecessary overtime? If Mary was scheduling her employees in Stratus time, she would be alerted that the additional hours she wants to assign Brad will put him into overtime. This gives her the information that she needs to make an informed decision. She can shorten his shift or assign the shift to another employee, or she might determine that the use of overtime is okay in this scenario. But whatever she chooses, the important thing is that as a manager, she is informed and there will be no surprises come payroll day. So wage theft is the next topic that we're going to discuss. And in the time and attendance world, we hear a lot about employees stealing time from employers, arriving to work late, leaving early, fabricating handwritten timesheets, or buddy punching at an old-fashioned time clock. And these are real issues that many organizations deal with regularly. But today, our number three frightening scenario is wage theft. And wage theft is the illegal withholding of wages or the denial of benefits that are rightfully owed to an employee. And unfortunately, this has become a very common practice in the United States, particularly with low-wage workers. So some of the wage theft that is being reported in the United States includes 70-hour work weeks with no overtime pay and months between days off. Employees being forced to turn in blank timesheets in order to avoid additional labor costs and even paychecks that bounce. So how big of a problem is this? It's actually pretty huge. New reports are indicating that wage theft could cost American workers up to $50 billion a year. So recently, the New York Times published a story revealing the wage theft that's running rampant in our country. And one worker reported that he regularly worked seven days straight and sometimes 11 hours a day. And many times he worked 60 days in a row. And even though he worked 70 hours a week, he was never paid his time and a half overtime. But now, thanks to legal action, he's eligible to receive more than $20,000 in back pay. Other employees are coming out and complaining that their paychecks are consistently missing a few hours of work time here and there. Hours were erased from paper time cards, or employees were asked to stay late in complete tasks even after they had already clocked out for the night. So what does a time and attendance solution do to stop wage theft? The first thing it does is it builds trust between an employer and its employees. An employee who clocks in and out via a biometric time clock, for example, can feel confident that his or her time has been recorded accurately. And if a supervisor with administrative access went into the system and altered the time card at all, there would be an audit trail which would indicate precisely when and where any alterations were made. Also, with pre-configured pay policies, employees are automatically paid the appropriate amount based on the time they worked. So there's never a question of whether or not an employee qualifies for time and a half or double time. Our next frightening topic that we'll be looking at is union versus non-union workers. 
Now, I'm not implying that there's anything frightening about union workers or about non-union workers, but if your company's workforce is comprised of any of the 14.5 million union workers in the United States, then you're likely really familiar with all of the intricacies of how those union workers must be paid their overtime and benefits. And this is where things can get a little bit scary. Specifically, we need to pay very close attention to how union workers are paid over time, how their benefits are delivered, and what other time-related requirements might exist as determined by the union's collective bargaining agreements. So during the configuration and implementation phase of new time and attendance software, individual policies including pay types, pay adjustments, and labor levels all must be set up to carefully follow each piece of the collective bargaining agreement. And within each union, there are different benefit levels that change upon hitting specific marks of time, say after 10 years of service, for example. This critical information must be accounted for upfront to ensure that all union workers are paid appropriately. So what do you need to ensure that you can handle the intricacies of those CBAs? So first of all, separate policies need to be available for each union at each level. In fact, it's important that your software can accommodate an unlimited number of policies so that you can make adjustments as they're needed. Second, you need to have the ability to add new policies as union agreements change or as business acquisitions occur. And finally, you might at times need to contact a union to send over a certain number of workers for a specific job. You need to be able to pay those em employees appropriately, even though they aren't a part of your regular payroll. So your time system should allow you to quickly, easily, and accurately add those employees. Now, when it comes to frightening labor management scenarios, the use of paper timesheets really takes the cake. And if you're still keeping track of time and attendance data with paper time cards, semi-automated spreadsheets, and manual calculations, first of all, you might be at risk of serious compliance issues. But also, there are plummeting workforce productivity and employee disengagement issues that you face as well. And furthermore, the strain that these antiquated procedures has on payroll processing is substantial. So let's take a look at the day in the life of an employee who is managing time and attendance manually via a paper time card process. So put yourself in this woman's shoes. Every Monday morning, you open up your timesheet folder and you dot down the time you started for work. You continue on with your morning until lunch when you again track your time. And this usual routine is quick and simple until you reach the second Wednesday in the pay period. This day is more hectic and papers are piled up on your desk. And after spending what you hope to be your 15 minute break hunting for your timesheet, you finally find it and you mark your time. You're frustrated and you have 15 minutes fewer in your day. And so you rush a little bit more on your work than you normally would to get out of the office by a decent time. A little more complicated, but not too much of a headache yet. Then it comes time to ask for a week of PTO to take a vacation with your family. And after tracking down your manager to request this time off, he emails the payroll manager just to double check and see if your PTO bank has enough hours to permit this break. And after sending off this email, your manager then looks at your colleagues' calendars to make sure at least one team member will be in the office at the time of your request. And luckily, no one else has requested time off. But now it's a waiting game. You're waiting for your manager to hear back from payroll. And unfortunately, the payroll manager herself is on PTO for the next two days. So it's easy to see what, that what could be a quick request and approval turns into a lengthy process. Now let's look at a day in the life of a manager. And processing payroll and keeping track of PTO requests can be just as scary for managers as they are for employees. So let's say you're the manager with six direct reports in your department, with each of those employees having between two and six direct reports of their own. In total, your department is comprised of 22 individuals, a mixture of exempt, salaried employees, and non-exempt hourly, hourly employees. So half the team works out of one location, and the other half works out of another, which is not an atypical scenario. So here's a snapshot of payroll day for the department. All employees fill out those paper timesheets that are appropriate for their type of employment and submit to their respective managers. 
But then because, let's face it, people get distracted and forget to submit their timesheets, you as the department head, you're the one looking for your managers to get them to chase down their employees' timesheets. Managers must check their employees' timesheets for errors, including calculating all time assignments, sign each timesheet, and then submit it to you. And some might be hand-delivered and others could be emailed. As a department director, you're then responsible for double-checking your manager's work, which requires, again, calculating all time assignments for mistakes like mathematical errors or misclassifications. And if something isn't correct, it goes back to the manager to fix with the employee. Until each error is resolved, you can't submit your department's payroll paperwork to the payroll department. And the payroll department cannot process the company's payroll without submissions from each department director. and it doesn't get any less frightening for those payroll managers. So let's say you're a payroll manager and you work in your corporate office with about 500 other employees. In addition to these 500 employees, you also oversee payroll for 18 employees who work at a satellite office in another city, 16 remote employees working from home all over the country, and then a service team that's based out of the corporate office, but they complete most of their work offsite. So when payroll time comes around, your job can get a little hectic with employees spread out all over the country. You receive everything from paper timesheets to scanned versions of timesheets, fax timesheets, and some incomplete or inaccurate timesheets. So you might be thinking, yes, well, those paper timesheets sound scary, but we have some very sophisticated spreadsheets. And often spreadsheets can give you a false sense of security. So here are a couple of cautions when it comes to time tracking with spreadsheets. First, the more complex a spreadsheet becomes, the more likely it will contain an error. Second, spreadsheets that are used frequently and are updated regularly are more likely to contain errors because the people using the timesheets can accidentally mistype into the spreadsheet. Third, the longer a spreadsheet is in use, so month after month or year after year, the more likely they are to contain errors. And finally, more users simply equals more errors. And errors in time and attendance directly impact errors in payroll processing. <clears throat> in fact, time and attendance errors represent 36% of total payroll errors. And this could be the result of fraudulent time clock usage that comes with what we call buddy punching from manual miscalculations that are simply caused by human error or other general inconsistencies among managers. And studies show that by automating time and attendance, companies are decreasing their time tracking error rates by 32%. And organizations that integrate their automated time and attendance with payroll see a 63% decrease in their payroll processing error rate. As a solution, we recommend an automated time and attendance software platform that boosts productivity and reduces errors. So how does the workplace change for employees, managers, and payroll specialists? Employees in offices might be clocking in and out on a physical time clock. They may also have access to a self-service employee dashboard from their computer where they can review their timesheet, submit time, and request time off all in real time. This means that managers can see who is on the clock right as they clock in and receive alerts as employees make time off requests. Employees working from home can also take advantage of the employee self-service dashboard from their desktop, just as long as they have internet access, or use the telephony option with any landline phone or our cell phone. So no matter what method they choose, the data is still collected in real time. Finally, mobile teams who are moving from job to job may benefit from a mobile interface. So not only can they clock in and out and request time off right from any smartphone with a data plan or internet access, but a location stamp can also be tracked with each punch. So this ensures that the team is where they're supposed to be and they're not padding their time cards. So that concludes our webinar of our five frightening labor management scenarios. I'd now like to open the webinar up for any questions that you might have. So if you haven't gone and done this already, you can enter those questions right into GoToWebinar's control panel, and we'll answer them as they come in. The first question I see is, um, when you integrate with other systems, which one is the master system, and does the employee data come from payroll or HR, or is everything stored in time? 
This is a great question. Um, and really the answer depends on you as the client and what you prefer. So when we integrate with systems like other like HRIS or payroll or an ERP system, you get to decide who is going to need to be the parent, who's going to be that master system. And then that's what we base all of the rules off of. Um, so it can be, you know, really the answer is any of the above. It just depends on what's going to work for you. But we recommend that there's one system that is that master system. <clears throat> the next question here is about our time clocks and if they're equipped with biometric devices or are there other options. So our net one time clock is a cloud-based time clock um, and it does, um, we do offer biometric, um, biometric readers on the clocks. We also have proximity badge readers or barcode swipe um, or you can just use the, the, the on-screen interface by itself. Um, and you can use any, you can mix and match all of those different data collection options for the time clock and use whatever is best for you and for your workforce. The next question <clears throat> says, if we have union workers, do you translate the CBAs into pay policies or is this something we do once we are live on the system? This is a great question. Um, <clears throat> so NetTime Solutions, we do not translate the CBAs for you, um, but that is something that needs to be done prior to you going live on the system. So it, when you're working with your implementation specialist, your specialist is going to provide you with um, a very in-depth questionnaire that's going to help you as you translate the CBAs. So someone on your team, either someone on your legal team or in HR, someone who's very familiar with the collective bargaining agreements for your unions that you work with, that person should be the one who translate the CBAs into the um, specific pay policies. Then we will take those policies and we will configure the system to work within those policies. But through that process, we're also going to train you so that as um, there are amendments this, to the CBAs or they're renegotiated, as kind of as changes kind of come come up, that you are able to go in and make alterations to your configuration. And of course, if you have questions throughout that process, you can contact our support team, um, or there's other ways that we can help you um, do more in-depth um, additions. Let's say if you if you add a completely new union or you acquire a company and you want to you want to really expand your database then our, our implementation team could get involved with you again at that point well I don't see any other questions coming through but if there are any other questions that do come up you can contact us go ahead and email info at nettimesolutions.com and um, we'll be happy to answer your questions offline so thank you so much for joining NetTime Solutions for our Halloween-inspired webinar and five downright frightening labor management scenarios. We're going to email all of our registrants a recording of this webinar, and it's also going to be posted on our website and YouTube channel. If you'd like to learn more about Stratus Time and see if it's the right automated time and attendance system for your organization, you can give us a call at 1-800-561-6366 or visit us online at nettimesolutions.com to request a customized demonstration. I just want to again say thank you, have a wonderful rest of your day, and have a very happy Halloween.